Hello everyone. A patrol police officer once saw a young man strolling around a park alone late at night. Having become quite concerned, the officer approached the man and asked him, "Hello young man, what are you doing out here so late at night?" The man replied, "Sir, I lost my sleep somewhere." and i'm searching for it friends for some reason a lot of people in today's world feel that they have lost not just their sleep but also their happiness joy peace purpose and meaning in their lives and therefore they keep searching for them believe it or not there are also many people who feel that they do not know who they are and where they are going friends if you are going through a similar experience please remember that you are not alone instead you can look to jesus christ our lord and savior whose birth we are commemorating at this holy festival of christmas friends let me tell you another story once there was a rich man who with his only son had a passion for collecting art They had collected most of the rare works by great artists in the world and displayed them in their house so as to be fairly seen and appreciated by others. They also often sat together and appreciated those works. But one day when a war broke out, the son left home to serve his country. A few weeks later, his father was notified that his son had been killed while rescuing a fellow soldier. About a month later just before Christmas there was a knock on the door As the father opened the door he was greeted by a soldier with a large package in his hand The soldier introduced himself to the father saying I was a friend of your son I was the soldier for whom your son gave his life Your son often talked about you and your love for art and then handing him the package the soldier said i am not really a great artist but i think your son would want you to have this the father opened the package it was a portrait of his son painted by the soldier though it may never be considered a masterpiece the father was very much captivated by the painting because the soldier had captured the personality of his son so well He thanked the soldier and offered to pay him for the portrait. But the soldier declined saying that it was just a gift. Then he went away. A few months later the old man became ill and died. An auction was held to sell all of the artworks and art collectors from around the world gathered to bid on some of the great paintings. The auction began with the painting of the man's son. The collectors were a little surprised that the first painting on the auction was the soldier's modest rendering of the man's son. The auctioneer pounded his gavel and said, "Who will open the bidding with hundred dollars?" There was complete silence. Then someone from the crowd callously called out, "Who cares about this painting? It is just a picture of his son." Let us skip this one and go on to the important paintings. Many other people echoed in agreement. But the auctioneer replied, "No. We have to see that this painting goes first. Now, who will take the sun?" Finally, a voice came from the back of the room. It was the old gardener who had worked all his life for the father and his son. I would like to have it. I will bid the hundred dollars," he said. The auctioneer called, "Will anyone go higher?" But no one wanted to bid higher. Of course, and by all means, they didn't want the picture of the sun. Instead, they wanted the more famous paintings for their collections. 
After a long silence, the auctioneer pounded the gavel and said, Going once, going twice, sold for hundred dollars. Cheers filled the room and someone shouted, Now let's get on with the rest of the collection. But the auctioneer laid down his gavel and announced, The auction is over. In stunned disbelief, someone spoke up and asked, What do you mean it's over? What about all other paintings? They are worth millions of dollars. The auctioneer replied, I am sorry. According to the will of the father, whoever takes the son gets it all. Friends, today on the special day of Christmas, we are told that the will of God the Father is, whoever takes his son Jesus gets all things. Yes, indeed, all things. As Jesus himself has promised to supply every need we have when we ask in prayer full of faith. Friends, the Bible is filled with the hundreds of what the Apostle Peter called most extraordinary and precious promises. These promises are not like the casual, incidental, unimportant promises which we human beings so often readily make to one another and then forget. For various reasons, we easily change our minds and break our promises. But God is not like us. He doesn't change his mind. His promises are definite, explicit declarations that we can count on. Because he alone is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does, we can have full assurance that what he has pledged will indeed be realized in our lives. What is significant is that in each promise, God pledges what will or will not be done, or be given or come to pass. Friends, we can divide God's promises into Old Testament promises and New Testament promises. The following are some of the promises found in the Old Testament. 1. God promised to bless Abraham and through his descendants the whole world. Friends, this promise called the Abrahamic Covenant pointed to the coming of the Messiah for whom Abraham and his descendants looked forward to. 2. God promised Israel to be their God and make them his people. 3. God promised that if they search for him, they will find him. 4. God promised prosperity to the obedient and destruction to the disobedient. 5. God promised to forgive the sins of the individuals and nations and restore their fortunes and open the road to fellowship and blessing. 6. God promised blessing for those who will delight themselves in his word. 7. God promised to fulfill the deepest desires of the human heart. 8. God promised to be the vigilant watchman over his people. Friends, the following are some of the promises which we read in the New Testament. 1. God has promised eternal life to all who believe in his Son. Friends, eternal life is God's greatest gift given to every true and obedient believer in Jesus Christ. 2. God has promised that all things will work out for good for his children. 3. God has promised to comfort us. Friends, speaking of the comfort or consolation of God, Apostle Paul says that God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. 4. God has promised new and abundant life in Christ. 5. God has promised heavenly and spiritual blessings such as peace, joy, satisfaction, contentment, wisdom, and true spiritual power. Friends, these spiritual blessings are not reserved for a select few, but rather for all whom he has chosen and adopted as his children, and all who live in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. 6. God has promised protection and peace in every situation when we pray. 
7 God has promised to supply our needs not that we get everything we want but our needs will be taken care of because we are more valuable than the birds whom he feeds 8 God has promised forgiveness if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquities 9 God has promised to finish the work he has started in us friends God does nothing in half measures Apostle Paul affirms he who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ furthermore says Paul Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, this is a very powerful promise for all believers. Friends, beside these promises, the Gospels record many of the promises that our Lord Jesus Christ has made during his time on earth. 1. He has promised eternal life to those who trust in him. 2. He has promised abundant life to those who follow him. Friends, abundant life is not about having plenty of everything in the world, such as money, property, wealth, relationship and opportunities, but true happiness, joy, contentment, satisfaction, fulfillment and peace. 3. As the Good Shepherd, he has promised to protect, defend and care for us, his sheep. 4. He has promised to give rest when we are weary and burdened. 5. He has promised power from on high. With this power, just as Christ came to glory through suffering, we too can overcome and rise above our hardships. 6. He has promised to return for all of us who have followed him here on earth. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. God has made these and many more promises which we read throughout the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation in order to first of all teach us about his incredible character and nature that he is faithful, merciful, just, true, loving, patient, forgiving, kind and so much more. Second, to encourage, strengthen our faith in his power and give us hope for the future and finally to inspire and motivate us to love and honor him 2 friends although these promises were limited to specific individuals or particular groups of people in different times in different situations and under different covenants such as the people of Israel and the early followers of Jesus Christ they do have universal application so friends we too as current believers can legitimately appropriate all these promises as our own if we truly believe in his promises, humbly obey his word and fervently pray for their fulfillment. 3. Friends, the celebration of Christmas each year serves to remind each and every one of us that God has made these promises to us and he keeps them and that he is the same yesterday, today and forever. God never changes. He has proved his trustworthiness by sending his son Jesus, the long promised Emmanuel, meaning God with us, and has made all his promises available to us through Jesus. Friends, as Apostle Paul writes, in him all the promises of God have come to be a yes. That is, just as the gardener in the story who bought the portrait of the son, and consequently was able to inherit the entire estate, including all the paintings, we are reminded today that when we come to Jesus Christ, when we accept and believe in Jesus as our Savior, not some of the promises or part of the promises, but all the promises of God find their S in Christ. All the promises are ours immediately and fully. 4. Friends, May you take encouragement from the message of the angel that Jesus is Emmanuel all the days of your lives. May you truly believe that God's promises are specifically to you and apply them directly to your lives and to whatever situation you are in today. 
If you feel as if you have lost not just your sleep, but also your happiness, joy, peace, purpose and meaning in your life because of your addiction to alcohol, gambling or pornography or sin of greed, selfishness, envy and pride or anxiety about job, money, security, health or relationships or fear of enemies and fear of death or you are looking for happiness, peace and joy in all the wrong places. Friends, it is high time to turn to Christ and discover the joy and peace He alone can give. Amen. I wish you and your families and friends a happy and blessed Christmas. May God bless you and keep you.